This is part three of the School Aged Essential ETR module. This presentation covers the additional steps and requirements of establishing the presence of a specific learning disability. Part three of the evaluation team report documents the requirements for determining the existence of a specific learning disability. The portion of the operating standards addressing specific learning disabilities must be used and referenced when a specific learning disability is suspected or is being reviewed for a reevaluation. A specific learning disability affects the child's ability to listen, think, speak, read, write, spell, or do math calculations. It could also include perceptual disabilities, brain injury, minimal brain dysfunction, or MBD, dyslexia, or developmental aphasia. Additional team members for determining or confirming a specific learning disability must include the child's parents, the child's general education teacher, or at least one person qualified to conduct individual diagnostic examinations of children, such as school psychologist, speech language pathologist, or remedial reading teacher. The last requirement differs from the team requirement for initial or reevaluations in other disability categories in that for SLD evaluations, this person must be qualified to conduct assessments, not simply interpret the results of the assessments. When the multi-tiered systems of support team is proposing to provide interventions prior to making a referral for an initial evaluation, written notification is required to be sent to the parent. If the child is to participate in a process that assesses the child's response to scientific research-based interventions, parents must be notified of state policies regarding the amount and nature of student performance data that would be collected and the general education services provided, strategies to increase the rate of learning, and the parent's right to request an evaluation. Part 3A of the Evaluation Team Report identifies areas for specific learning disability. Identification in the category of specific learning disability requires that the child does not achieve adequately for the child's age or to meet state approved grade level standards in one or more of the following areas. When provided with learning experiences and instruction appropriate for the child's age or state approved grade level standards. These areas include oral expression, listening comprehension, reading fluency skills, reading comprehension, written expression, basic reading skill, mathematics calculation, or mathematics problem solving. No single measure can be used as the sole criterion for determining eligibility. Multiple forms of assessment that are technically sound must be used. An observation must be included as part of the process for determining if the child has a specific learning disability. Interventions that are used must be scientifically based, provided at appropriate levels of intensity, frequency, duration, and integrity, and relative to the child's identified needs. Ongoing progress monitoring must use technically adequate assessment procedures must be conducted while the child is receiving scientifically based instruction. Progress must be reported to the child's parents. Interventions may not be used to unnecessarily delay a child being evaluated to determine eligibility for special education services. The use of Part 3C Patterns of Strengths and Weaknesses requires prior approval granted by the Ohio Department of Education. The district must have a board adopted procedure for determining SLD. This method 
must establish that the child exhibits a pattern of strengths and weaknesses in performance and or achievement relative to age. State approved grade level standards or intellectual development or developmental delays for free school children. The procedures used must be relevant to the identification of a specific learning disability and must include data from appropriate assessments. The team must determine that its findings are not primarily the results of a visual, hearing, or motor disability, intellectual disability, emotional disturbance, limited English proficiency, environmental or economic disadvantage, cultural factors. Appropriate assessments must be conducted to rule out these factors as primary effects causing the apparent disability. For example, behavior and social-emotional assessments must be conducted to establish that the deficit is not primarily a result of a behavior or emotional disturbance. Especially in the initial evaluation process, all possible factors related to the suspected disability must be assessed and considered. For underachievement due to lack of appropriate instruction, the team must demonstrate with valid and reliable data that the child was provided appropriate instruction and repeated assessments of achievement were completed at reasonable intervals showing student progress or lack thereof. Interventions that are used to establish this must be scientifically based, provided at appropriate levels of intensity, frequency, duration, and integrity, and relative to the child's identified needs. Ongoing progress monitoring must include technically adequate assessment procedures, be conducted while the child is receiving scientifically based instruction, and must be reported to the child's parents. The district must conduct all the assessments required for an SLD initial evaluation, apart from repeating the intervention process. Use data that are currently available, include current classroom observations, and include current classroom achievement data even when conducting a record review reevaluation. You cannot skip any of the evaluation processes for SLD. All the information used in SLD reevaluations need to be updated to reflect current levels of achievement.